So here we are with um, the blended out highlights and the additional lights on the small elements. And yeah, I think it looks quite good so far. The uh, next step that we have to, to paint, the, the next part is the helmet and the upper part here. Make sure that because we, we're trying to paint somewhat a senator light situation, so the light is from straight above. So make sure you paint the areas that are on the top quite a bit lighter. As you can see here also on the back, back there on the, down there as well. So we need to keep that in mind when we place the highlights for the for the helmet as well. And just taking some of that techless blue, mixing it a bit with uh, the Cantor blue. I don't want to go for the brightest highlight already so I'm just starting with the, the off highlight. So here on top of these ear elements And this is going to be exactly the same technique as you've done previously for the, the blue armor, right? Yep. So, nothing new. I mean, and there's a slight difference because we will, um, here on the, on the front of the helmet, we will have a somewhat round highlight, mm -hmm. like this. And we need to feather that out in a round manner as well. Here we want a really nice strong reflex to one side here. Okay, can already go a bit brighter now. So you know, also pulled it here under the eye to get a nice little highlight later on once it's softened up. Um, we'll do the same here. But really just along the edge. It's quite an important thing that you, you just brought up. So if you're if you're watching these videos or you're 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 just learning to paint, it's the first time you've watched something like this. The the way that um, the brush handles what where you leave where the brush leaves the model is typically where you have that largest collection of pigment, and it's just down to to you practicing that and working out how to make that work for you. Yeah, especially to when you want to blend in um, strong dots like that, it's really important to. And it came back to what, what you were saying earlier on about the direction of your brush when mm -hmm. you were doing the glazes and softening. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, now, now I just start to to work here in this very prominent part and soft that out a bit. So just place down a middle tone and now just with a clean brush pulling the pigments down using a glaze consistency mm -hmm. okay now um, with a bit of white in the in the techless blue to get that highlight here on the front really nice and strong Okay, and with a bit of the counter blue, just uh, the pure blue here, to get that line really in the middle. Okay, 
and a bit brighter color here for uh, our highlight here on the, the top reflex. I went for a for a round reflex here because um, in the ideal case the um, the light should always represent kind of the shape uh, where where uh, where it's on. So here we need something round and a little bit longer highlight here because it's kind of uh, a stretched um, stretch ball. Um, so. Adding stuff like the round highlight here will really help you to make the the helmet itself more readable to the eye because it's just easier to understand. It helps for a lot of artistic mediums to, to think when recreating a subject for it to think of it in shapes and volumes, right? Yeah. There are many, many books out there on this subject. Now with the glaze of the midtone here, I try to blend it into the side. Also connect these two these two highlights. Bit hard to see at the moment because of the reflection. Darker. Right and um, some some pure techless blue here also to get that separation line of the upper shell of the helmet and the lower. This is a very thin glaze of um, the pure um, techless blue. And feather it around. You can still see here that strong bar between our starting color and the, the highlight because I didn't blend that out. So I'm mixing a middle tone of the two and Let's see already almost disappeared. Okay, nice. Um, I think I need to push the, the this highlight here still a bit to match with the lower part of the of the helmet. So especially with the round highlight sometimes it's a bit back and forth to get the, the contrast right. Mm -hmm. um, but this here as it's uh, one of the focal points of the miniature you really want to get that straight. So this is a mix of the, the light blue and the white? Yeah.
Now just a bit more of the tetanus pool. And a bit thin down, pure tactless blue to kind of soften the whole surface a bit, pull it a bit together. Okay, while that dries, we can also pull the highlights here all along the, the edge of the, the middle area. Okay, already looking pretty good. Um, just need to really get these little last highlights in place. And is that with pure white you're placing there? Um, no, it's still with uh, still with blue in there. And here in the in the shadow side um, it's again just the techless blue. Okay. And as I don't want that to look too much as like a classic edge highlight. I will just uh, also soft it out a bit to the top. Uh -huh. um, also another quite, uh, quite important part here is um, that upper rim around the helmet. That highlight is quite, quite important to, to really make the helmet itself stand out. So here, a bit brighter in the middle. Just take some black paint and get back that outline here. All right, so um, yeah, I think you, you know you know how how I will um, usually blend a helmet like that. Um, you can also spend some extra time to get little highlights here on these edges. Um, I think for for now on cam that is okay. Let me just rearrange the palette for uh, with some color for the the eye and the little OSL effect. Also some weathering paint so we can finish the helmet and start with the weathering next. Okay. Awesome. All right. So um, 
for the eyes, um, I've introduced a uh, color from a different brand on the palette. It's uh, the uh, Warm Green from uh, from P3, from Private Tube Press. Uh, quite an intense green, a little bit like the old uh, Games Workshop Scorpion Green. And we will use that for... for it's, it's got really excellent coverage for such a light color. Yeah, and it's super vibrant. Okay, and uh, try to leave a little black line um, between the mask and the, the eye. Mm -hmm. We'll use some pure white for the reflexes here. And I'm mixing some white with the with the green to blend it in a bit. And again some pure white. And so that mixed color to blend it out. Okay, and um, I mean, right now the, the eyes pop out quite a bit. That's normal because it's the only other color beside um, the, uh, the shades of blue that we have on the model. Um, we will add a, um, a OSL. So a little object source light on that. Um, but before that, I want to make sure that the eyes are just on spot. And here, the line to the side is a bit uneven. I like to get them a bit darker. So I'm just glazing a bit of black here over the edge in that recess. Okay, and for the a lot of people have uh, actually trouble painting painting an OSL. I think it's quite important to work with thin colors and glazes. That that is actually quite easy. Um, you just have to keep in mind that the color builds up towards the actual light source, and that the light source itself is always brighter than the reflecting light. Um, if you mess that up. Uh, then it's easy to look strange, but um, we will just not go for pure pure white in the in the final light, and that should be should be okay. I mixed a very thin glaze. You can see that on my fingernail. So it's it's really thin, and it's just that uh, warm green. I will try to place it here. And pull it towards towards that edge, actually, the upper edge here. And don't put too much uh, paint in the brush. So my brush is uh, just a little bit damp, and the green is just on the tip of the brush. Also a bit here on the upper edge. Not too much on the upper edge, just a little bit here around the middle um, because we will add a stronger highlight with 
uh, thicker paint just here at that edge. Okay, and again with the thinner glaze, just glazing over that area a bit. <coughs> Maybe just in that middle with a bit of white in the mix, just to get that highlight here on the edge nice and sharp. It's, I think it's quite good on the lower side. The upper side is a bit too harsh. So just with that thin green. And note I'm pulling the pigments just over that edge so they collect here at the at very edge. I think it's quite nice to see the difference actually of the, the two eyes next to each other. Mm -hmm. So that little, just that little work um, makes the, the figure really pop in the end. And uh, I would just continue like that in the very same manner on the other side. Um, but yeah, I think you, you got um, how I paint my O's else. This was a very safe way of doing it. You shouldn't be scared of doing it if you're using very thin paint. It's, yeah. It's very hard to, to, to really miss it. On the yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make sure you pull the, um, the brush in the right direction and think about where the pigments uh, are collecting. And don't have too much on your brush. Keep yeah. Try to yeah, yeah. That's, that's also quite important to just not overload your brush because that way you, you can hardly control where the paint runs. All right. So um, I finished that and uh, we'll be back for some nice little weathering.